Hello, good morning and welcome to Finland for the second race of the 2019 World Cup. Today we have a shorter long distance that's being run as a chasing start. So our winners from yesterday, Tova Alexanderson and Gustav Berman, will, will start first with the rest chasing and they have a good chance of taking another victory today. I'm Catherine Betts, I'm here with Jonas Mertz. So Jonas, um, with the gaps we have from yesterday, are you expecting two more Swedish wins today? Um, that's a hard question. M maybe. Maybe I do. Um, they were very good yesterday. Uh, very convincing run. Um, also the speed seemed to be higher than the others had in, in the terrain. Uh, so I think there has to happen something to them. They have to do mistakes otherwise uh, we will see those two runners on the top again. I think so. So Tova Alexanderson will start today with a two minute and eight second advantage over the rest of the field with uh, second place Natalia Gempeler uh, chasing. Uh, Gustav Bergman, uh, his race will start uh, a bit later today. He will start with a one minute and 33 second lead over second place uh, Frederick Tronchon. Uh, Jonas, we ran uh, the course a little bit yesterday and um, how does it compare to, to yesterday's middle distance race? Um, it's hard to compare them because you have many long legs or you have some route choice legs at least in the beginning and in the very end. Um, also the terrain, I mean you don't go in this slope which was very tough and many fallen uh, trees there yesterday. We don't have that uh, today and um, it, it's different. It, it, it really is because you have more, you have these forkings as well, you have uh, short legs where you have to be very precise in orienteering. Um, I experienced it to be a little less open, the forest, uh, the visibility is still good, but maybe less than yesterday in the beginning. And um, if you really want to do uh, different route choices on the long legs, there's a possibility. So. I think it's a good it's a good course, and I hope that we will see the field splitting up. Yeah, hopefully. So the top ten from yesterday's race, uh, they were awarded some bonus seconds over the rest of the field. So essentially, their time has been shortened, meaning they have a greater advantage today. So uh, the winner, which in the women's uh, middle distance was Tova Alexanderson, and she will get uh, she received 120 bonus seconds. Next place got 90. Next place 60, and then it keeps decreasing. Um, and then the tenth fastest from yesterday has five bonus seconds so i can see we will have at least uh in the beginning the top 10 will be more separate but then afterwards we're going to have a lot of chasing groups aren't we yeah uh, that's correct and also i think i mean now we have them separated in the top 10 but i think they will group up at least in uh, smaller groups of two or three runners um and that's uh, some more excitement i think because it's hard to be in the lead alone and maybe you can uh, do take some more risks if you're in a smaller group, two or three uh, runners together. Uh, so I hope a little bit for that moment that we have the runners taking more straight route choices when they are together and maybe the run in runners in the front to choose a little bit more around. And um, yeah, I really hope for, uh, for uh, small gaps today. Yeah, me too. And... Um, how much in preparation for this race, you know, doing recovery last night, preparing this morning, will the athletes be thinking about who's starting immediately before and after them? Well, of course, that's that's one part of the game. You, everyone is aware of who is running in front and who is running in the back. But at the same time, I mean, those preparations are very... I mean, it's not a big part of the preparation. Still, you have to focus on the terrain. You have to focus on your run. You don't know about the forking system. I don't. They don't know if there I are any forkings. They don't know if there will be any butterflies or if it will be uh, kind of a diamond uh, forking system. There will be map changes in the forest. So the runners don't really know about that. And I think that's more the part you focus on when you prepare. Um, of course, you can talk to each other. I mean, the runners, they know each other, they can group together, but still, I don't think that this is a big part of the preparation. No, well, we're in the um, same arena as uh, yesterday for all the middle distance, and uh, the orienteers will be starting today uh, in the same place. 
Uh, in fact, I think this is our setup from yesterday. They will be, uh, they're going to start in this arena. They're going to head out into the forest uh, and then come back with a little bit passage through the arena before doing a short loop again um, but yeah that means they will be heading much deeper into the forest there aren't as many controls on as you said that quite difficult slope with a lot of those fallen trees uh, and of course the athletes have been in quarantine this morning and some of the the later starting particularly the male athletes will be uh, out in quarantine for a long time but you can see uh, the start list here and you saw the picture of a lot of the women waiting to go out, seeing what they could see from the start line. They could see a little bit of the arena, but Tova Alexanderson there with uh, such a big lead over the rest of the field. But then, uh, as I said, there's there's three women are, who are going to be 6.26 behind. And in fact, there's, there's a big group there. We can certainly see, expect to see some of those Finns working together uh, in, in the start list um, as we go forward. So this is the start and they will start they will start from the arena they'll be getting used to seeing this arena now of course the athletes have no idea really um ahead of this race where the start's going to be so they can use that they aren't able to use that to be able to plan where they think the courses will go of course they will have been looking at some of the uh older uh, maps from the area and getting some idea of what it's like getting some feedback from yesterday's race but this is the course yes and you see that uh, in the very beginning we get a long leg to the first control and i think that's a good thing especially when you have uh, uh, this group I, I mean in the beginning you have these small uh, differences between the runners maybe 20 seconds start gap and uh, you might not see them at the start point so there's a chance that they choose differently in the very beginning um, when we talked to some of the course setters yesterday, they said that the straight on is always an option and it's always a good option. So, but at the same time, I mean, uh, if you are alone, it's a bit more risky to go straight. Um, you have to be focused all the time. You have to be careful with the direction. We saw some of the runners having problem with that yesterday. Um, so there's, there's a chance that we see some runners running around. This is uh, right after the first control. From the second control, there's this forking method. It's a diamond, so we have uh, different loops here. The train here is uh, quite open, but still the visibility could be a little bit better. It's quite tricky. You have to be careful, even though uh, if you are very focused and careful, I mean, the maps here in Finland, they are so good, so there shouldn't be any problems. And we have TV controls at number 9 and 10. And from number 10 and 11, we start to get back to the arena again. Longer leg from 11 to 12. Um, here we have different route choices. I actually think the green one is quite extreme. I don't think they will choose that, even though it's... I mean, the entrance to the control is very easy, so... Of course, the runners will see that possibility, but it's, in my opinion, it's too extreme mm -hmm. uh, to do because it's good runnability straight on as well, and the control itself is not very difficult. And then we have the arena passage at control number 14, TV control as well, and we go into quite a different area, very small loop in the very end, right uh, by the arena. Um, it can be interesting if there's a group together in the last part, but it shouldn't be any problem technically for the runners. No, and then back into the arena to finish. So here are the uh, first two going to start. Tova Alexanderson, of course, winner from yesterday. Her two minute and eight second advantage. Chasing her right of picture, that's Natalia Gempela from Russia. And Carolyn Olsen there, number four in the background. She's going to be three and a half minutes uh, after her teammate Tova Alexanderson, who is uh, looking very, very concentrated, very focused today to get going exactly at the right time. So she takes her map from the box and will start. Now, Alexanderson's aim today, do not get caught. She is the first one out into the forest you can see she will have a two minute and eight second lead at the very very beginning and as long as she doesn't get caught the uh, first ones across the line will be crowned the winner overall in uh, these two forest events at the world cup 
So there is a big gap, Jonas, as you say, to the next to the next athlete, which means Natalia Gempler will not, of course, be able to see what decisions Tova Alexanderson makes as she heads out into the forest and uh, out of mostly out of our picture. But here she is going to run through this area of the white forest to, before she gets uh, to the edge of the green. And then let's have a little look about what she decides to do. Mm, it seems that she decides to go straight on here. Um, there's the possibility to go to the left, uh, quite far around. She's heading up in this to the slope. We have seen the second last control yesterday. Many runners with problems there. But of course now you have to just get through it here. Yeah, so she looks at the moment it's like she's, of course, taking a very straight line, but we'll see it is a very long leg towards control number one and all the decisions that have to be made with that. But a minute and a half in, she gets to near the top of this hill and then um, she is heading reasonably far left, I think, out of that control, but um, out of the start. But um, we will get we will be able to see on the gps tracking exactly which route she takes and then of course uh, exactly which route all the others will follow speaking of following natalia gempler is going to start in about 10 seconds time and then uh, it's 51 seconds back to marie katani took uh, the bronze medal position the best of the Finns uh, yesterday in the middle distance yeah, and it will be interesting now to see what route choice or what route Natalia Kempel is choosing here in the beginning because I think that's uh, one of the ways she can uh, maybe close the gap to two wave, two ways choosing wrong, one of the longer route choices. And you can really see her looking very carefully and making that decision immediately from the start. Yeah, I mean, it's a very decisive point. You have this long leg, you can easily lose a minute or more on the wrong route choice. And uh, it's a good... Uh, tactic to invest some seconds to be sure that you choose the right route. Absolutely, and folding the map there, getting it orientated, checking the different route choices and really making that considered approach. So Marie Katani is the next one to head out into the forest and from then on we're going to start seeing the runners slightly closer together. And maybe uh, it could be a tactic for Marie Katani, if she doesn't want to get to run together with Caroline Olsson to make a very, very fast decision here so that Caro doesn't have the chance to get in contact right at the start point. Because if uh, Marika would start as, say, uh, slow as Natalia Kempeli or careful as Natal Natalia Kempeli was doing, she, would mi she might get contact directly. Absolutely. Well, Caro heads out and we can just see that Marie Katani has just made it out into the forest. So... Uh, the gap is is not is not that much, and we'll really see if if Caro also attacks this one really hard. And we know she's got great speed. Uh, then she too could be able to catch up some time. Mm -hmm. But you see already here, she doesn't have the tactic to just get into the forest and mm -hmm. try to spot uh, Marika Taini. She's uh, reading the map carefully and deciding the route by her own. Camilla Olausen next to start, another top five position at uh, a World Cup race. Ven Lahayu next off, and now you can see they're uh, going a lot closer together. But then we have another gap of about a minute, though, to Sila Kinney. So Olausen and Hayu here running very close together, but the two of them uh, still, of course, needing to make their own route choices here. You could very well you know, catch up a lot of time if you take a good choice on uh, this first leg. and. We will see whether these two uh, will make the same decisions. Of course, uh, uh, Olaus Sim will have the advantage here. She'll, well, she'll be uh, making mo more of the decisions, maybe. Okay, next to start, number seven, Saila Kinney from Finland. And then we will have uh, Rudnaya only seven seconds after that. And then a, a little more of a gap to Simona Abersold, who... Um, had a really great race yesterday, apart from the last couple of controls. Yeah, and even today we have some of the controls uh, just before the arena passage in the same slope again. I think some of the runners will get a little bit shaky before it. Uh, the ones uh, who missed yesterday, some of them might even have seen the, the control point yesterday already. So. Uh, 
So this is like we're following Marie Cataney, who um, looks like she's gone fairly straight out of the start point onto the top mm -hmm. of and this hill here. Everyone who has followed the race yesterday, that was actually they were running the other direction to the second last control to this through this flat area up there. So Anastasia Rudnaya heads out towards the start point. We've also just seen uh, Simona Abersold, her first uh, senior year, chasing there. And uh, Ilin Monson from Sweden also about to go out. And then around this six minute mark, that's where we really will see a lot of people. Marina Anderson, uh, you can see there, uh, is going to be behind her. Sabine Hausworth, sorry, that's her in the back of picture. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of Finns, Maya Sinoya, Sari Antonin, Lotta Kohola, and uh, Eleanor Ross as well. So we will soon see, in fact, about five seconds time, three of them all starting together. There we go, that's the group of three. So this is a group, could be a group of six here that we see together, as there's a little bit of a gap back towards Anna Bachmann, but, well, we will see. And all of these women very carefully looking at their own maps and trying to make their own decisions, it seems. We haven't seen anyone uh, just leg it out of the start and just hop on the tail of somebody else yet. Yeah, but they see that there's a very long leg coming. So if you, if you head out very fast and you actually don't see them at the starting point, then you have to stop there and to the, take the decision. So I think it's smart to... to Take it a little bit slowly and try to decide the routes there by your own. So Tatiana Lyapkina, Lillian Fulsgren there in front of picture. Svetlana Mironova from Russia in third of that group and Siliak Kulyarin in the fourth. So with the running cams, looks like the dark hair of Ben Hayu there as we're chasing her again up this slope in the early stages of the course. I don't know what that white tape is. I noticed uh, I some of it. I wonder if it's a it. cable. I noticed some of it yesterday as well when we were pre arming So here we see mm. Natalia Kempele is going to the left, running around to Alex Anderson, heading out straight. We also see that Marie Kateini and Kara Olsson, they choose uh, differently here. Looks like Karen Olsen is also heading to that track that Gempel is running along, but Alexanderson going very, very uh, straight along the line. I think quite similar to yesterday, where she was she was very, very close to the line a lot of yesterday and had really, really good direction through the forest. Mm -hmm. But of course, you can see on the, the trails uh, of the GPS trackers that the, the length of them gives you a little bit of an idea about the speed. Oh, Carolyn Olsen's changed her mind. Yeah, that's uh, usually not a good thing to do. Um, and you see... And now she's dropped see, behind. Exactly. We um, see that she's behind the group now with uh, Venla Hariu and Camilla Olausen. Yeah, Camilla Olausen and Venla Hariu were behind Carolyn Olsen at the um, at the start. So Olsen dropping some time by uh, changing her mind. I reckon she will have seen the others out in the forest and then decided, oh no, maybe I should actually go with them. I mean, also that uh, Natalia Kempley, she's very aware of her strength uh, in running. So it's, uh, for a runner like her, it's easier to see. I mean, the, the first thing she will do, of course, you always check if uh, straight is a very good option, but the second thing you do deciding a route choice is, is there any good uh, route choice to the left or to the right where I can actually use a path and a runner like Natalia Kempley, who's very strong in plane running is of course very eager to find those those uh, to find those paths and uh, use them to get uh, very close to the control 
Now, I'm surprised that uh, Ven Lahai, you see in the pink dot, she's gone uh, further south of the line. I'm not sure what her aim is there. She on the track still? She's on the yeah, track. Yeah, she's on yeah. the track still. So choosing to, uh, yeah, do some more track running. Mm, but she has to do quite some angles there. And I mm. think, um, I mean, the, the terrain is really fast in this middle part if you hit the flat and the white spots. Uh, so I think they're actually the route uh, Alexanderson is taking is very fast, but of course you have to execute it well at, at the same time. And she is doing it very good at the moment. And uh, also, arguably, you've got to you've got to think about pacing at this point as well. It's very obviously just control number one. You've got to think about whether uh, it's more advantageous for you going straight. So you will you use up more energy that way. Will you use up more energy by going round? And um, that I think is particularly interesting. Yes, also, but I mean the course is not very long. No. It's uh, it's not the very 8 .9 much. Kilometers. Yeah, exactly. It's not much about an hour. So much more than an hour, so everyone here is able to push very hard for an hour. That's not the problem in, in this terrain. Um, yeah, I also want to uh, draw your attention to Abasold and Hauswitz, who the blue and the purple dots. Uh, Abasold is number nine, started ahead of uh, her teammate Hauswitz, but uh, looked like she was a little bit too far south and kind of hit that marsh uh, with a black line around it, then had to go north and divert round. And I think that's uh, that's one reason why Hauswitz has caught up uh, Abasold at this point. So uh, yeah, that's surprising, I think, for me. And uh, one advantage with the root choice of Natalia Gamble is that you, if I mean, if you continue there on this track, then cutting over to the lake, I don't. Maybe she's running all the way around, but there's also a possibility to cut a little bit there. Mm -hmm. She gets a very easy entrance to the control, and maybe the straight option by, chosen by Alexanderson is a little bit more difficult. At the same time, this hill with the spare rocks on the on top. Um, I mean, it's not the visibility is couldn't be better there, so it's not a very big problem for her either. So here we are behind the leader. So Alexanderson has been going pretty much straight mm -hmm. all and the way to control number one. You she's, can see she's going over the, that hill there and then go, go over another hill to the next control. And we see that uh, Venla Haru is choosing quite an extreme option there. I think she will lose t some time doing that. Also like the, the way Marika Taini is running at the moment. Um, so quite close to the red line. Now Alexanderson is climbing up this hill I mentioned before where the vi visibility is very good. So this gives you some time so to, if you lift your head and uh, and and spot try to spot out the different features, then it's you actually can get a very easy entrance because you see so far and you can spot out the different hills. So it shouldn't be any bigger problems to get the control. No, you can see there, I think there's a little bit uh, more of a delay on the GPS compared to the picture. So she's heading, just heading down the hill now into control number one, very, very right of picture. So if we think about Gempler was two minutes and eight seconds uh, down at the start. We're going to be able to have a look and see whether that route choice is paid off. I think she will lose a little bit of time. Yeah, she will lose let's say between 30 seconds and a minute. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, here's control number one. On uh, Boulder. And we're looking out for Alexanderson here with uh, coming up to 15 minutes of running time for her. And hasn't yet found the control. That's, uh, I think, some good planning from this um, on this course to have the first control so far away and really splits everybody up. So Alexanderson there into control number one. And now there are a series of controls a lot closer together and including the diamond loop as well, which will split people up even further. 
Now, let's have a look uh, back at Marika Taney, who uh, started three minutes behind Alexanderson, but Camilla Olaussen was a, a further minute behind her and I think has managed to catch up a bit as a result of that. But back behind uh, Miranova, and this is what you can see with that group of four athletes who've taken uh, some of the track options and all heading uh, the same direction off, uh, off the track there as they headed into the forest. trying to cut those corners and and those three four runners almost going in each other's tracks uh, they're pretty much just running behind each other even though they've managed to split up now trying to take the different micro route choices uh, where there are good lines to run through the forest so that's the group I think at the top of the map Alexanderson already on her way to control number two and it is Gempler I think who will be at this uh, first control next but let's see how much time she has uh, lost but you can also see Marika Taney and Camilla Olausen running together now so Olausen's caught up uh, over a minute there on Marika Taney great running from her I think Ven uh I'm not sure her route choice was that great although now she's got doesn't have to do as much climb into control number one. Quite a, a bit of an easier yeah, but entrance to the control, but she's too far away. Yeah, she's too far away, and now she's not uh, a very easy entrance, or not this uh, given entrance to the control. She still has to do the job all the way, and uh, if you take the route choice Gamble has chosen, the route Gamble has chosen, she really gets an entrance which is very easy on her route choice and uh, I think it's if you run around it's the better choice to go to the left as Gempler was doing. So Gempler is uh, losing time now compared to Alexanderson. Uh, she was two minutes and eight seconds behind at the start. Mm, but, but still it was quite okay to yep. go to left. Let's say it's maybe 20 seconds so mm -hmm. a little bit better than we guessed. Yeah so 20 seconds there. That's quite an okay start. 21 seconds, yeah. That's not too much difference in those two route choices then. And for sure she could save some energy by running around. Absolutely. Okay, so Gempler has made it to control number one. Alexanderson is already on the loop, going to the westernmost control first. Uh, and we can see in the bottom of picture Olausen and Taney are on their way. They've split up a bit into this control. Yeah, we had Taney. She was 2 minutes 59 behind at the start. So she lost uh, more than 20 seconds here in the beginning. Still waiting for her, or for the next group. Here she comes. Three thirty-six. So she lost uh, thirty-seven seconds here in the beginning. Um, but Camilla Olasen, I think, has caught up some time. Yeah. So she's moved up uh, one place. Uh, she was four minutes and five seconds behind, now only 3.40. And we see uh, Alexanderson, she keeps on going <laughs> straight direction. I mean, there's an option to hit the small track a little bit to the right, but she chose to go straight there, trusting on her compass. Van Hayu, she is next was sixth place, just caught up a place as well, but uh, lost time uh, compared to Alexanderson. Carolyn Olsen, though, she's dropped a couple of places and we could see at the beginning of the uh, leg to control number one, mm -hmm. making uh, changing her mind about her plan. She lost one minute doing that. And now we see that was it's the point where, what I said before. Okay, we don't know which option Kempel has, but there is an option, even if you have the same number three as Alexanderson has, to go take this small track and uh, avoid some of the climbing. So top six all through within uh, four and a half minutes. And then we could see there are there's a big group actually all together that have come up the track and they should be the next ones uh, to make their way 
led by Sila Kinney, who was five minutes and 14 seconds behind Alexanderson. So now 5.11, punching with Anastasia Rudnaya. Rudnaya's caught up a, a few seconds uh, compared to Alexanderson, of course. Uh, so to Sila Kinney. So those two now in uh, joint seventh place. So the number with, with, that they're running with uh, is their position that they finished uh, yesterday's race. So well, that'll give us an indication whether people are uh, moving up or down uh, the start list. Here we have the next group. Group Finland coming here and also Marianne Andersson, Elena Roos, Maya Sianoya. Yeah, this group have uh, worked together to pull up uh, some places, I think, actually. Uh, we're missing Simona Abersold. I don't think we've seen her through uh, yet. Uh, she was in ninth position, so dropped uh, some places there. Uh, don't think we've seen uh, Aileen Monson either. And yeah, so that group, uh, those kind of two there have uh, who I think went straight have lost some time compared to that the group that we've just seen. Here we have Simona Abersold. Had some problems in the beginning of this route. Six minutes, 36 seconds behind. And we see now that Alexanderson is doing a big mistake there to control number four. So uh, this is the chance now for Natalia Kempele. We also can mention that Kempele has another fork in there. She went straight to number four. So a different option in this uh, diamond here. Uh, but no problem for Kempele and Still, I would say this might be one minute, one and a half minute, maybe. Let's say a minute mistake by Alexanderson. Yeah, she looks like she just got the direction. She was expecting to hit the top of the hill and turn left, and she did that and went too far down. But I'm not sure which. No, there's a, there's an option to the left for Kempele. They don't. It's not uh, her option is not shown. Now it's shown here. Showed here. So Kempel has to go to the left, she's hitting the road here. And Alexanderson has to continue to the east from control number four to the control which is marked as control number five. And Kempel is going to... No, Kempel should be going round to number five as well. That's right. Yeah, because they have to go east out of that control, whatever they do. She's gone straight up the middle of the diamond and Tova Alexanderson went up the left of the diamond. Those are the two options. Once you get to the control three or eight, you have to go east. So that's a mistake there as well. Lisa Rispi, Silvia Ekroliaran. Now this is a big group. Mm. So one, two, three. So let's see. Ten runners kind of there within about 30 seconds, or within, well, within about 20 seconds. So uh, both Kempele and Alexanderson with a mistake here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Caroline well Olsen dropping a few places, but the Russians, no, sorry, the Finns doing well in, the, in the amongst the, the top 10. Abersold has dropped a few places. Manson's dropped a few places. Uh, Lisa Risby's caught a few places. And this so is, let's see uh, again. What's happening? Yeah. We see now that Kempele will come together with uh, Ben Lahariu and the Olsen group. So kind of good for Alexanderson that uh, Kempele did a mistake as well there. Yeah. I've, I've, I'm trying to think about how she could make that mistake. Maybe she thought she was going to control number nine, or... I mean, you have been running the women's course yesterday. Do they have the whole course printed on one map? Yeah, yeah, so they have the whole course printed on that side, and then it's only when they get back to the arena that they have the map change for the, the last little loop okay. after the arena but, passage. But then I think she was uh, reading the wrong line out of yeah. uh, control three, to control nine directly. That's my guess, yes. But so 
Af because of this diamond loop, uh, it's only when they get to the end of the diamond that the different forkings will have kind of unraveled and they will, will all have traveled the same distance. Because we know that Alexanderson has gone the, the long way at the start. So she went uh, to the west, control three, as it's marked on this map, and Gempela went straight on. But now uh, uh, Olsen, uh, Haryu will be getting some good feedback that they, something's gone wrong with Natalia Gempela. They'll be uh, feeling really good. Uh, in that group particularly and they probably had the straight um, from like two to four which is marked on this on this map on the picture uh, but they will have to go that further distance um, at the end of the diamond yeah their mm -hmm. guess will probably be that Kempley had the longer forking there in the beginning the longer loop yes. and that's that, that this that's would be the reason why they caught her but yeah. that's not true no, 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 that was a, a very bizarre mistake, just keeping going north, northwest out of uh, that control uh, four slash eight that we saw. But meanwhile, the rest of them going very direct to this point. Yeah, Saila Kinney is missing the control mm -hmm. a little bit, coming too much to the south. But uh, I think she can uh, spot the back of uh, Elin Monson and Sari Antonen there. Mm -hmm. Maria, no, it is Maria Antonen. So we're looking at the gap between Alexanderson and uh, Marie Cataney. Uh, the gap was uh, 3.33 at control number one. Uh, now looks like it's uh, just over those two minutes. So a minute and a half mistake there for uh, Alexanderson at um, that control for where she just drifted north of the line, had to, and then went went left on the top of the hill and they should have gone back to the right. I think we have another runner doing a mistake at mm -hmm. control four. It could be Karhula. Yep. Doing something similar as we have seen Alexanderson doing. Now we are behind Simona Abersol maybe. And here we see is it Marika Taini? No. I think Marie Cataney is too far up in the group. There we go, that's the control. Yeah. That looks like control uh, three or four, depending on whether the runners are going straight or uh, or taking that extra control on the diamond. There we go, that was the punch there where we saw Lotte Kohola coming in from the left of picture. That was her mistake there. But when you've got lots of people running together, then um, you can see uh, maybe get a little bit of help into that control. But it looks like the gap is uh, actually getting sh smaller between Alexanderson and Taney. And uh, maybe that's because Taney is running with the group. Maybe Alexanderson is backing off the pace a little bit because she made that mistake. And she knows she's in a great position starting out. She knows she's got a really good speed, so. Uh, she knows that she has to get up to control number four again. Yes, that's true, yeah. Yeah, how does that play with you when you've made a mistake to that control once already, then well, for sure, be extra careful. For sure you're extra careful doing that. But now, I mean, if you have to go straight, you get this small path to the right of the control. Um, so we will just run on the top. And if you are if you have problems and the, or if you have a lot of respect for the control, you can just leave the hill down to this path and then you should get it very easily. So I don't think she will be very afraid of this control. No. And then the others, that chasing group, will have the extra control this time as they go through the diamond. And then we will be able to get a bit more of an idea of who is in that chasing pack and where they are and who, which groups are together because of course that big group that came into control number one that ran all the way around the path they will have been split up on their way in the diamond in the forking there and um will of course go back get back together um after control number eight where the rest of the course everyone has the same controls Mm -hmm. 
Now we see also that uh, Kalle Nilsson and Venla Harjo are choosing to go straight up the hill there to control number, the control which is marked as control number three on the map here. And Gempele is choosing to go a little bit around there, avoiding some of the climbing. Yeah, it's nice and uh, open on top of those hills, but uh, of course you do have that extra bit of climb in order to make your way up there. This is Alexanderson now with uh, 30 minutes of running. Mm, you see in that the uh, visibility here is not as good as it is on uh, as it is in other parts of the forest, so it's kind of tricky here. So she's on her way to control number eight, where we saw her make a mistake already at that point. So second time lucky, and we'll be keeping, uh, we'll probably be heading fairly steadily to this one, but you know, making good progress. Mm -hmm. She's following the hill now. Then she has to leave the hill a bit to the right getting down to the stone with the control. Oh, this is her running out of control oh, yeah. number eight. So she's already got that control. And the next point is nine. We'll get another split time and we'll see uh, what the difference is there. As she passes the water point and then a potential use of a water point as an attack point into control number nine as she runs along the track. And then we'll already be starting thinking about uh, 11 to 12, she'll have noticed there's a long leg from 11 to 12 and has got to think about how she will plan and execute that knowing that she's already made a minute and a half of a mistake in the forest. So control number nine, 5.1k around the course of uh, 8.9 kilometers in total. Uh, this is the control site on the knoll and still going to be Alexanderson in the lead despite a small mistake but then I think we will see some changes uh, in the chasing group and in the positions from from the rest of the competitors here as uh, they make mistakes catch each other up and have the different forking uh, as well in the the diamond loop I heard somebody at the uh, team leaders meeting asked if there were any butterflies in the, this course today and uh, the organizers responded, there are lots of butterflies in the forest. You see them all the time as they fly around everywhere. Mm. And uh, here we see that uh, Gempele lost time on this uh, forking method here. Now it's Taini and Olausen together chasing the leader, Alexanderson. So remember, Gempeler was in second place as she left the start and the mistake going out of control four, uh, I, I think almost as if she was going to control number nine, uh, <clears throat> has really put damage to her chances of catching Alexanderson, of course. Uh, Olarsson running very, very well. It looks like she's ahead of Taney at the moment, but 2.14 gap between Alexanderson and Olarsson uh, kind of being maintained. Here are these two uh, runners. So second and third place uh, on the track on their way to control number nine. So Marika Taney is in third there. You can see Camilla Olarsson from Norway ahead and uh, it looks like Larson's running really well and uh, hopefully using this, sh uh, making some speed on this track to get a bit away from Marika Taney. And you can see there to the left, there's a refreshment point and uh, we don't have that on the GPS map, but we had the runners of course have it on their map so they can actually use that refreshment point as an attack point to get their control. As long as their refreshment point is in the right place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it but should it should be. be. It should be. Okay, so back again at control number nine. Here's Olausen. Yeah, and, and uh, Olausen was uh, 3.35 behind. 
at the first TV control, and now it's uh, only a little bit more than one minute. So she was one and a half minute faster on this uh, butterfly. Yeah, I think that's the mistake from Alexanderson. Yeah. We can say a 90 second mistake there. But I mean, she was faster already to the first TV yeah, control, that's true. so yeah, she's doing a really marks. good race yeah. here. Very good race. So the next group we're going to be looking for, oh, group of three, fantastic group of uh, Venla Hayu, Karen Olsen and Natalia Gempeler, uh, all along the track now. Rudnaya looks like she's by herself and then there's going to be a really big super group there. As you can see, Natalia Gempeler's already cut into the forest. Carolyn Olsen and Van Hai both are deciding to take a little bit of refreshment. It's not quite as warm out there as it was in the last couple of days, but still, uh, still, I think about probably about 20 degrees, um, but a bit cooler, I think, in the forest. So now getting t towards and beyond uh, three minutes behind Alexanderson. And we'll see, it's like, Gempela will be the first into this control. She broke off the track first. So Gempela, uh, despite her mistake, out of control number three or four for her, then is going. Uh, That's quite going a big well. In gap fact, now. she's uh, she's taken a good a mistake. initiative. What must be the mistake from the other two? Yeah, we yeah. can also mention that uh, Gempela lost uh, 50 seconds on this uh, forking method. So between TV control number one, nah, number one and number two, and here we have Karolsson. She must, they must have done a mistake here. I think so, yep. Yeah, and uh, this is Rydnaya. She's been able to catch up. Yeah, so mistake there made uh, by both uh, Olsen and Hayu. They've lost about 40 seconds on Natalia Gempler. All three of them were together on the track. Uh, Natalia Gempler cut off the track first. The other two took some water. Uh, and yeah, it'll be interesting to see what that mistake was there. But back behind the leader, Tova Alexanderson. See, the runnability here is very good, and also the visibility is quite good. Back at the TV control. Now we're going to have a group, I think. Marianne Andersson. Yeah, she's caught it up another few places uh, from control number one. So we have uh, Elena Roos. Sabine Hauswirt. Abersold uh, at the back of that pack. And here we have uh, the leg between control number 11 and 12. Uh, there was a small mistake by Alexanderson. She was uh, first at the wrong stone. And it seems that she continues to run just straight on, using her compass to get the right direction. I think that's a very good choice on this leg. Uh, everything around seems to be too extreme. Yeah, and there's a good number of paths that are pretty close to the line in the middle of the leg. You've got to maybe try and avoid some of the green patches some, or some of the marshes. Yeah, I mean, you can stay now a little bit south to the red line and then uh, you hit a slope and there's a small track following this slope. So you can run on this slope, uh, on this track and um, you get quite an easy entrance to the control as well there. This is Kempele. Control number 10. 
see that uh, Olausen is continuing to uh, get closer to Alexandersson. Now it's 152 before it was 208. But still two minutes and um, we're quite quite close to the arena passage already. Kelly Nolson, position five. Vendahari on six. And uh, Rutnaya on seven. Yeah, still those uh, 40 seconds behind Natalia Gempeler. Little mistake possibly there by both Olaasen and Taney into control 11 as well. Yeah. Gotta and we see that uh, Alexanderson is trying to get back to the red line, avoiding some of the marshes there and also heading towards this small track. Seven are clear, but we know there are a lot of women approaching this control. Here we can see the first, the next ones to approach. And so Sila Kinney there leading that group. Marina Anderson also, Elena Ross. Sarah, Sarah Anton, Maya Sienea there as well. Anna Bachman to, uh, towards the back of that group. So six women running there, then that little gap towards uh, Sabine Halswitz and Abersold as well. So three in that group and they are, yeah, I think they're running about the same pace as Alexanderson. I don't think Alexanderson is really, uh, has that, mu that well, much of a higher speed. I, I even think they're running a little bit faster than uh, Alexanderson is, especially Camilla Olaus. And uh, it seems that uh, Marie Katani I mean, there's always some meters between the two runners. And uh, I wouldn't be very surprised if uh, we would see Camilla Ulausen just uh, working her way away from uh, Marie Katani in this last uh, part of the, of the course. It seems that she's very strong. These are the standings. Tova Alexanderson, just reminding again the mistake to her control number four, uh, but she's still ahead, leading with less time than she was at the start. 152 is the gap. Uh, particularly uh, the group, you can see just how, num how many Finnish flags are in that top 16. Uh, they seem to be doing really well, of course, on this home soil, but back between behind uh, second and third, Kamala Olasen, Marika Taney in the front of picture. And yeah, I do agree seem to get the impression Olausen has that better speed, of course, as they uh, make their way on, on this track up the hill in the middle of this leg between 11 and 12, so about halfway between the two controls I expect at this point. And seeing another of the runners on the way to, I think the, in the opposite direction on the way to control number one. You also see the small track Alexanderson is on. Um, this is a very small track. You have to be careful running on it that you don't lose it on the way. It helps you with the direction, but it's not uh, very much faster to run it uh, compared to the open forest just beside. But of course, it gives, gives you a good indication about the direction and um, you can't do uh, any mistakes as long as you're on it and you don't have to be very careful. But um, just, uh, it's not a big track, so you have to be careful to not lose it on the way. And especially to find the, the entrance to it where Ulaus and Taini are now, is, uh, it's not that easy because it's not going all the way down to this path. 
And let's say the gap now is uh, around one and a half minutes, maybe. For it was uh, one fifty-two. Yeah, maybe even a bit less than uh, a minute and a half. The but I mean, we have to. The, the time check it will be at the arena. Mm -hmm. We have to keep in mind uh, Alexanderson is in the lead. She doesn't have to. I mean, she's quite a big gap. For sure, she doesn't know how big the gap really is. She did a mistake, but um, I still think that she has a good feeling about that she's in the lead and does, that she doesn't have to take too much risk. Um, and uh, we have two runners behind chasing. That's usually a little bit faster. The gap's still quite big, so unless uh, Alexanderson is doing a mistake here, uh, I think she's still quite safe. They won't just. Uh, catch her by, by uh, the biggest speed they have. So looking at the third chasing group, we've got those four runners together. Olsen went a bit further, or close to the line, but further north of the line across the marsh. But Gempela looks like she's lost those 40 seconds or, or some of those 40 seconds, that advantage that she uh, built up around control number nine uh, and the four of them all running together there. Again, taking, cutting through towards that track and taking the track. Now, let's move back towards uh, control number 12. The entrance to that control is a little bit tricky if you're coming from that direction. I mean, it's uh, it's not tricky. It's It seems very green on the map. It's not that extreme and it's very... I mean, when you're there, it's very obvious where this green area is. Um, it's mostly fallen trees and uh, marsh on the ground, but it's not as extreme as it looks on the map. So this is the chase group of four that I was talking about, with uh, Gembler up the front, uh, and also Mira Nova, I think, there as well. And no, Rudnaya, sorry, Rudnaya up there as well. And um, they too have managed to find that small track through the forest. About just over halfway uh, between controls 11 and 12. See now the track is not very big here. So Alexanderson will be on her way into the arena very, very shortly to get in control number 12. Then 13 is on that slope you were talking about earlier, Jonas, that uh, a lot of the runners had some difficulty on yesterday. Then she will take control number 14, which is uh, in this arena here. Um, and we'll get another time check, be able to see the exact difference between all the runners. And then there is a small uh, loop on the final part uh, of the map. They will actually do a map exchange in the arena and then um, have this very small loop at the end before making the way into the finish. You see now that Alexanderson is uh, heading down into the slope. The control we had yesterday was very close to that one. Um, and I think, I mean, they were, I'm sure they were talking a lot about this uh, slope and control uh, because we have seen many mistakes there yesterday. And uh, I'm sure they will be a little bit e extra careful there now. Uh, so it shouldn't be any bigger problems. And I think we he hear her coming. Yes, indeed. So this is control 13. And control 14 will be uh, in the arena. Oh, oh. Some, some problems there. <laughs> so here we are in the arena, waiting for the figure of Alexanderson. There she is crossing the bridge, I think. Oh no, not quite. There's some of the uh, uh, spectator races as well going. We should see the difference, of course, in speed as she will uh, emerge from the forest and go towards the right of the picture to um, go and punch a control in the arena and then run through the arena uh, into another small section of forest before returning again to the finish. Now she comes, I think. Yeah. So here is our leader, Tova Alexanderson, running steadily. Made a small mistake in the forest. 
but she is still clear, of course, of the rest of the field. And the lone figure making her way uh, through the arena. She's dropped her map, picks up another one, and gets an indication of what she has to do on the last part of the race. Not very far to go now. So 1.6 kilometer loop uh, now in the forest for the last part. So Tova Alexandson gets cheered through this uh, rather long run through this field here and the spectators well, I'm sure a lot of them will be hoping to see her again at the finish with a clear lead. And of course, they have a coaching zone there as well, so she gets an indication about uh, how far behind the other runners are. And um, she definitely knows that it's more than a minute, so uh, she can take it quite, uh, yeah, quite safely on, the, on this last loop. And we also see that uh, Camilla Olausen is doing a mistake. She's running to the control they had yesterday yes. there and um well i i have to say it's i mean they know that it's difficult there um mm. and you can really say that the control today is less difficult than uh compared to the one yes yesterday yes, and um <sighs> that shouldn't happen really no. but it may, might be that she was pushing really hard and uh N knowing that she has a chance to run away from uh, mm -hmm. Marika Taini if she just continues to, to push and hit the controls right and that she's, she was taking too much risk here, maybe. And of course she doesn't know exactly where she is in the field. She doesn't, I think still she will have a good, in, I think she'll yeah. have a reasonably good idea, but still she doesn't know how, if the uh, chasing pack are close or not or, or no, anything like that. No, of course, you never know, but uh, she did a very good race so far. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that she has a feeling about that she, she was, uh, she's definitely in a better position than she started at. Well, she'll get some sort of indication as uh, she comes through the, uh, arena here and Marika Taney will also be able to get some indication that she is in second place. She will know that she's lost Camilla Olarsson who's literally just emerging from the forest now. Now Camilla Olarsson will be able to see Taney ahead of her, be able to kind of gauge how uh, how far she has to catch up if she's going to retake that second place. But Marika Taney just uh, putting her head down and going up through this uh, arena here. So Camilla Olausen, the Norwegian, picks up her new map. Only 1.6 kilometers of the course now to go, taking on some fluids. Mm -hmm. And of course, getting shouted at from the coaches. They'll have some feedback, both from the arena speaker, from the coaches in the coaching zone, and uh, get some encouragement. So the gap has grown, though, between Tova Alexanderson and the chasing group. Marika Taney was 157 behind. She's now two minutes 24, losing about 30 seconds. But Camilla Olausen, uh, has dropped nearly about 55 seconds, nearly minutes uh, on Tova Alexanderson with that last part. So uh, she's 20 seconds behind Marika Taney and I think it's possible to catch that. So here's the next group though. This next group here, led by Carolyn Olsen, Venla Haye also there. And actually I think they are around, they're gonna be around the same time uh, behind Tova Alexanderson. So running kind of similar speed to Alexanderson. Let's have a little look. So Carolyn Olsen, Ben Hai, Anastasia Rudna, and Natalia Gempler at the back of that group now. And certainly Carolyn Olsen, I think, has caught 10 seconds on Tova Alexanderson, running well at this part of the course. Mm, and she's pushing quite hard in the uphill there. And we see also the last loop here on the GPS. We see that Alexanderson didn't have any problems to get uh, stone there at control number 15. And the gap between Taney and Olsen still is quite... I mean, this is quite a gap. I'm, I'm tempted to say that uh, there's a mistake needed by Taini uh, for uh, Olausen to catch her. Yeah, 
Here we have Sabina Hauswirt, Marianne Andersen, Elena Ros, Simon Abersold as well. It's quite a big group here. Sayla Kinney has dropped a few places. Anna Bachman there, number 17. Sorry, Antony, number 14. And uh, Lotte Kaholo, number 15. Nine. Nine of them. But this is control 15. Mm, and then we see the gap is... Uh, Smaller again, 154. So uh, Taini is pushing hard here on the last loop. She doesn't want to get caught by Camilla Olausen, of course. We're waiting for Olausen here at uh, control number 15. And I'm, yeah, wondering that. Oh, yeah, and she's uh, doing another small mistake, heading up too far on this hill. And now she has to be careful to not be caught by the group behind. Uh, it might be like that. I mean, it's uh, you lose some of the self-confidence doing a mistake just before the arena passage, and then you're suddenly you're all alone for the first time in the whole competition. And um, here she comes now. It's going to be a minute gap here. And I think it's actually what you were saying earlier. She was pushing really, really hard uh, in the middle part of that course to get away from Marika Taney and then possibly uh, getting tired, making that mistake into 13 and it, that having the knock-on effect. And so of maybe course, Taney's pa just pace it better. And of course, it's a difference if you push very hard and you always catch runners in front of you or in the loop there you, you have the runners having maybe the... The, the option which is a little bit shorter in the beginning and then you have someone you always see and you have runners around. It's, it's a difference to push very hard then or when you're in the lead of your group and uh, go alone. And here is the group behind. They are, they're all too high. Wow, that group too high. And still the four of them together. Caroline Olsen, Venahayu, Anastasia Renaya, and Natalia Gempler. Who in that group would you back on a sprint finish? Well, I wouldn't want to, sp to uh, sprint against Caro. I think she really has the... <sighs> she wants to win. She's, she's that kind of uh, person. <laughs> she is. But speaking of winning, we've seen Tova Alexanderson at uh, the last control. So she all she has to do now is uh, cross, come behind... Uh, the tents here and enter the arena to run around this point and she will get the feedback there that there's no going to be no uh, challenges to her to her lead leading all the way from the front it's not been a clean race from Alexanderson uh, she's not had that significant speed being significantly faster than the others but she has managed to keep her lead keep her head around uh, almost all of the course and not let that mistake early on affect her, her run and just keeping it calm, keeping it cool and Tova Alexanderson will be able to take her second victory today second victory of this first World Cup round leading all the way from the start, fantastic race from Tova Alexanderson, 58-51 going 9 seconds faster than our expected winning time today Yeah, I mean she didn't do a very clean race but at the same time you never got the feeling that it's really tight behind her or that that, that the others are very very close um, so still a very uh, good race by uh, Alexanderson of course you have this mistake but she after that she continued she got back into a race uh, and you never had to be afraid uh, you never had the feeling that she's nervous or, or anything. She, she just continued uh, doing what she was doing before the mistake and um, very well deserved. So Marika Taney here going to go into the arena and a lot of the Finnish spectators will of course be cheering her on. She's going to go one better than yesterday and I'm keep kept her head around the whole course. I have to say it's very impressive. I mean, she was... Uh, some meters behind Olausen, it's very easy and tempting to just follow the runner in front of you, but she noticed when Olausen was doing a mistake, not following it, not doing the same mistake, heading to the control, get it without any problems, and uh, deserves this second place.
Yeah, well deserved as she makes her way all the way to the line. We'll get the silver medal position today. And yeah, she, she just, I think, I can't remember seeing any mistakes particularly from her. Just kept it very clean. But here um, is the third place. Uh, Camilla Olausen picking up two positions compared to yesterday. I mean, Taney, she lost a little bit on on the route choice to the first control, let's say 35 mm -hmm. seconds. Mm -hmm. But uh, beside that, we didn't see any problems from her side. So the third woman, Camilla Olarsson, the Norwegian, just now running around this arena. Great, great effort from her. Very consistent in uh, top five positions in Forest Races World Cup the last uh, last year and of course here today. Uh, I think just pushing a bit too hard towards the end or in the middle and uh, made, made a few mistakes. And we have to say, beside this mistake uh, in the slope just before the arena passage, she did a great race. I mean, she started three minutes and 35 seconds behind. And uh, so she was one minute faster than Tuva. That's not every day you do that. <laughs> and uh, But a bit disappointing that she is doing a mistake in the slope where we have uh, where we have seen a lot of problems yesterday. OK, now this is this group of four women, but it looks like uh, Natalia Gempler has managed to do very well on the last couple of controls in the forest and is actually clear of Carolyn Olsen of Sweden, who will be chasing her there. So Natalia Gempler, who made a very bizarre mistake uh, partway through the diamond is going to cross the line for fourth place carolyn olsen just catching up a small amount on the run-in but must have made uh, some hesitations i think towards the last few controls anastasia rudnaya from russia here in uh, sixth place we're also looking out for venla hayu who should be uh, who was in that group of four here she is and yeah she's just uh, jogging that up she knows there's no places behind her that she's got to defend and um, yeah crosses the line finding that one tough and when you're with a group of, of four like that you've really got to be switched on and racing feel like you're racing with the others but now we're gonna have I think another little sprint finish uh, this is the last control here and they will go around the arena and I think we will see a little bit of a sprint out here they're fighting for some top 10 positions Sabina Hausir on the top of the group and uh, Anna Bachmann behind Elena Ross there Marina Anderson those four so an Abersold sorry Antonin Tyler Kinney as well. Let's have a look who's looking good in, in and around the forest. Looks like Sabine Hauswert is going to take the next spot. She's managed to get away from the rest of that group. Impressive running there in that big pack. So too uh, Anna Bachmann from Sweden. She will cross the line into ninth. Eleanor Ross completes the top 10. Marina Anderson as well in there will go into 11th. And Anson Simon Abersold as well. And that completes, I think, our top, must be top 13, 14. We are missing We're Anna missing Bachmann a few, on the. Yes. So let's see, that's the. Last part of this course. Oh, we've seen uh, Venla Hario going uh, too much to the north there, losing her position in the group. In fact, small mistake by the whole group there. But Gempler just that bit faster. I mean, that's, that that's a little bit what I mentioned before. If you, the runners behind Campbell, when she was doing the mistake to this last control, the small mistake, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, maybe they were too tired and just following the back. But if you are very cool and you still have some energy to do your own orienteering, then you 
might take advantage of a situation like that. And that was, uh, in my opinion, very impressive when we saw uh, Marika Taini just not following uh, Camilla Olausen when she did the mistake just before the arena passage. On our system, we've also got the the times overall for today's race, and uh, the winner overall today, Tova Alexanderson, only the 12th fastest so far. In fact, Anastasia Rudnaya from Russia, she was the quickest uh, around the course, 56, 54 minutes. Eleanor Ross was second. Marika Taney, who took that second place uh, overall, was third fastest, joint with Camilla Olarsson in the end. Tatiana Ryabkina chasing with Yulia Jakob crossing the line at the same time. Get that joint time. So to Melior Antonin running uh, just ahead of Lisa Risby. We've also got Sophie Bachman there too. Elin Monson who's dropped quite a few places. Uh, Alexandra Hornick, she's caught up a long way from 33rd. So to, it looks like... And we also have Anna Bachmann in the system. She actually has the second best time, only one second behind uh, Anastasia Rutnaya on this chasing start. So, yeah, I think we can see with Tova Alexanderson's time definitely not being among the fastest. Of course, she did make about 90 seconds of mistakes, but she did what she needed to and, yeah, didn't, didn't do much more than she needed to, but, I mean, still got the job done overall. Yeah, I mean, if you start the race with uh, an advantage, which is two minutes, then uh, you might not have the mindset to go in and... Uh, take all the risk uh, you can, I mean, or you have to. And uh, you have some runners behind, most of them, if you see Rutnaya, who has the fastest time at the moment, she was uh, starting a little bit behind, uh, for sure. She had a great day physically, and then you can just try to catch the other runners. You see a lot many backs uh, in the forest, and you can, as soon as you have caught up one of the runners, you, can, you might see the next one, and that helps a lot when you're running a chasing start. Um, so I think it's not very surprising that uh, Alexandra doesn't have the fastest time, but she did one and a half mis minutes mistakes, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't see that too often. No, we don't at all. So overall, uh, when thinking about uh, looking at the map and being in the terrain uh, before the start of this race, did things kind of go as, as we might expect? Um, Yes, more or less. I expected it to be bigger differences in the route choices. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had uh, the straight route was, let's say, 25 seconds faster, but it was very well executed as well. Um, we'll see a similar route choice, a uh, similar route in the men's race. I don't know if, if there will be bigger differences there, but I don't think so. so the first route choice is not very decisive. They will have a longer route back later on in the course. Otherwise, we've seen mistakes in the butterfly in the forking system. Uh, the visibility is not that great as it is clo as it was yesterday in the beginning of the course, for example. So maybe it might be that the runners are a bit surprised about that. But otherwise, it's well. We had Alexanderson winning the race, so more or less as expected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, when you have a two minute and eight second advantage, then uh, that's, um, yeah, pretty hard to lose. So third place, as we can see from the pictures there, Camilla Olarsson taking uh, another top five position in the World Cup. Marika Taney really, I think, contained race really, uh, I think, managed the pressure and the pacing and everything really well. Didn't get in a panic when Camilla Olasson was running faster and then made the mistake. And uh, great performance going one better than yesterday to finish second. Uh, but of course it was Tova Alexanderson leading with uh, two minutes and eight seconds before she'd even started, such as her advantage from the middle distance. Uh, not a clean race. 
but she did enough, uh, kept it steady, didn't make uh, such a big mistake and um, didn't, as we would have predicted, didn't see anybody else out on the course today uh, that was going to challenge her. And in the end, it was uh, just less than two minutes for Alex Anderson. So coming up in about five minutes time, we will have the start of the men's chasing start where yesterday's winner Gustav Berman will head out first with one minute 33 seconds lead. This is the map. Yep, we see it's quite a similar start. Um, the first leg we have uh, more or less the same uh, route choice to the first control, uh, but without they had this, the women at the second control as the first. Um, the fact that it was very fast to go straight um, tells me, or I, leads me to the guess that uh, that suits Gustav Bergman very well, who is starting first. Uh, a longer loop here in uh, this forking systems, and then we will continue further away from the arena. This is a very nice. It's so nice terrain down there. Go down here. I don't think it's. There will be bigger problems uh, technically, maybe there around 14 and 15 when the, where the visibility is lower again. And then at control number 17, TV control, they have a map change, so they can't prepare this long leg, very long leg back uh, to control 18. And they, there we have uh, three possible route choices. Um, my first guess was that we would see many runners go to the right on the red route, but I think it's quite far. I mean, the terrain is very fast. Um, some of the runners with uh, strong physical skills might choose to go to the right to, to try to make a difference there, but I think that straight is a good option. Same here on this uh, leg, 19 to 20 straight, as we have seen in the women's race. Th this is exactly the same leg, 19 to 20. Uh, I think that's the, the fast and we will see the runners choose that. Then a little bit of different loop here in the end compared to the women's race. So we will see Gustav Berman heading out in with a leading position, he will be a minute and 33 seconds ahead of uh, Frederick Tronchon from France, who took the second place yesterday. Olaf Lindenaers from Norway uh, will be chasing two minutes and 31 seconds behind uh, the lead. And then uh, Magna Daly, only 20 seconds after that. Uh, again, there's, there's pockets of people who will be running on the same time. Uh, very similar times close up and we will see certainly what happens with the different groupings of course as well split up with loops and um, how well that first leg and then the the loop will be able to split up some of the groups and whether any of them will be able to work together to be able to catch up uh, Gustav Berman who uh, will be leading out the pack these are the gaps that they will be starting with um, look at Olaf Lindenaer's Magna Daly, only 20 seconds apart. So, same two with Martin Regborn and Daniel Hubman, who finished fifth and sixth yesterday. Another group, Mika Kim and Avotik Kral, might well happen. Uh, and as they start, you know, as they won't, certainly the runners at the very, very beginning won't be able to see what the ones ahead of them will, uh, what decisions they will make to number one. No, they won't see that. And um, I mean, I'm wondering how decisive it is. Um, we have seen it in the women's race. It's the difference is not very big, and for sh I'm I'm quite sure that we will see many of the runners in the beginning go straight uh, in the men's race because the control is it's not exactly the same as we have had in the women's race. So it's a little bit closer to the arena. And this leads to that it's, it's even a little bit better, in my opinion, to go straight then. OK, only a few seconds now, about 10 seconds I make it until Gustav Berman is going to head out into the forest, just keeping his cool looking very much ahead at the clock, which tells him when to go. See Frederick Tronchon in the background waiting to head off, so to Magna Daly. So 
Here we are, start of the men's chasing start, and Gustav Berman will be chased by the rest of the runners, taking a good look at the routes for his way to control number one as he heads on the route out towards the actual start control itself. Taking a good look, but looks like he's made his decision about which way he will go. We'll follow these tapes here all the way through to the start point, and then we will have a little look at the direction he heads out of here to get some indication as to where he's going. You can see him already looking towards the left, and he will head straight up the hill. Yeah, definitely. And uh, as I mentioned before, that's not a big surprise. He's definitely one of the best when it comes to uh, executing long legs and uh, keeping focus all the way so it suits his strengths very well to go straight here and as we've seen uh, in the women's race I mean it's a it's a very good choice as well absolutely and uh, we were quite impressed with Gustav Berman's speed yesterday that he had on the middle distance uh, he was able to take some good chunks of time out of the rest of the field that's allowed him to start with such an advantage today. And it was not only impressive for us, uh, I talked to Matthias Kiburts yesterday and he said uh, yeah, it's not only that he was uh, doing a very clear race technically, it's also that he's so fast in the terrain and um, yeah, that's uh, good feedback you get after the training in the winter. Definitely. So Frédéric Tronchon from France started off uh, quite aggressively here. Uh, quick uh, leg speed as he runs out, makes his decisions. Mm, interesting here. I mean, if I would guess, point out some of the runners which could, uh, who could be tempted to go around here, it would be Frédéric Tronchon would definitely be one of them. Maybe Kibbutz and uh, some other Swiss guys are, as well. Uh, not those two guys in the picture here. <laughs> I think they will go straight. Yes, I think so too. Olaf Lindenez and Magna Daly. Lindenez, uh, top ranked in the world. Uh, third place yesterday. Caught up uh, Matthias Kiberts in the forest and ended up in the third position. So he will now head out into the forest and only 20 seconds behind his teammate Magna Daly. Now, this is very uh, aggressive start out here. He's very much aiming to chase down uh, Gustav Berman and, of course, Frederick Tronchon, who was in second. This is Tronchon heading up this hill now. And uh, Olaf Lundener is, of course, uh, king of the long distance. Uh, you never want to bet against him on this long distance as uh, Magna Daly also uh, heading well, out it's there. It's not officially a long distance, it's a chasing start. And it's I actually a shorter long distance, I, yeah, it's only I, I 75 minute winning time. Event advisor yesterday and he said they were not allowed to call it a long distance because then they would have had to put it 1 to 15,000. So it's a chasing start today, it's not a long distance. And it's not even a shortened long distance, it's a chasing start. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, we have about 75 minute expected winning time uh, for the men's. The women uh, went a little bit quicker than that. I think we will see the same uh, on this men's course as well. We also saw faster than expected winning times yesterday in the terrain. Daniel Hubman, who was uh, sixth yesterday. Uh, So 20 seconds after Martin Egborn, Mika Kiermela also on the start line here. And now there's a few Wojtek Kral you can see just there in the right of picture in the Czech colors. will go only six seconds after him. A very, a lot of these men starting, of course, very aggressively. They've got somebody to chase there. Checking out all the routes there as with it, Carl has already started. Gad Helen Steva and Jona Runison will start on the exactly the same second in uh, ninth and tenth position. And next to start will be Matthias Kiberts, who was caught in, uh, in the terrain. Yesterday, you're behind Londoners. Mm -hmm. Tough job for the cameraman. <laughs> and just heading over the track, a very straight route out of control, out of the start towards control number one. 
Luca Basse, who had he had very good speed yesterday. Mistakes at the end, though, cost him uh, a top 10 position. Joe Haddon as well for Switzerland. Next to start, and then a little gap for Ruslan Glibov, who's just warming up, uh, keeping, keeping warm, keeping ready, keeping focused in the background. Two Swiss starting together. Jonas Ecker and uh, Florian Hovald. Torge Norbeck, who had uh, a great run yesterday, was leading for a long way, doing a lot better than his world rankings. Gene Imsen also starting there. And yeah, look, this is a big group. Uh, also got Rudolf Zernis, the Latvian, who was doing very well. Martin Hubman there uh, in the Swiss colors. Simon Imark, Ralph Street, mm, Simon and they're Imark. really all queuing up now. <laughs> Funny story about him. I mean, he wasn't in the team from the beginning, so he was uh, actually traveling up to the ultra long distance Swedish championships. Um, he didn't fulfill the, the whole course because he felt uh, tired and not in shape. Um, it was very hot as well, and then uh, after he finished, he got uh, the call that he could uh, fly to Finland and run the World Cup race, and he did very well yesterday. Yeah. So I think he was quite happy that he didn't fulfill the whole course at the ultra-long uh, Swedish championships. <laughs> yes. That already would have knocked it out of you. So, let's have a look at the routes to number one. Yeah. See that Lundanes is going uh, a little bit more south than the others. Uh, so there's no one choosing to run on the path around, as we have seen in the women's race. Um, the gap between Gustav Bergman and uh, Frédéric Tronchon, let's say one minute 20 approximately. It was a little bit more from the beginning, but good direction by Bergman. So let's say one minute and 10 seconds, maybe, between Berryman and Tronchon. Oh, and now we have the first ones going around. I can uh, spot Jonas Ecker and uh, Florian Hovald, the two Swiss. Why do you expect more of the Swiss to go around? <laughs> because there's Swiss. No, I, <laughs> I mean... Um, I think as a runner who's competing a lot in, in continental terrain, you, you get the eye for, it's very catchy for you that you choose, you're looking for the, 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 the routes around, because you have to in continental terrain, and you don't lose that, that skill or that behavior when you come to Scandinavia. And uh, as I experience it, uh, the runners from Scandinavia don't have it the same way. They have to actively look for this route around. And um, this is leading to that it's easier. I, I get the feeling that they often see it very quickly and then might choose it. And then, of course, some of the runners, they see their physical strength as one of their 
big advantages and then you're more eager to, to choose a route like this. Yeah. I'm a bit surprised though that uh, Florian Hovald is, is uh, choosing to go around because he is very skilled uh, when it comes technically. Uh, he, in his behavior, he's more like a Scandinavian runner. If you compare to like Matthias Kibbutz, who is, I mean, we know from earlier races that he tends to choosing those routes around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we will see him uh, go around later on in uh, the course. There are this is not the only long leg, of course, in this uh, this race today. But Gustav Berman now on uh, the main hill, approaching control number one, and you can see, yeah, this visibility, the runnability here is very good. Although, you get the impression that Gustav Berman just uh, just. A little bit uncertain, kind of checking, changing direction. Uh, I don't slightly. think so. There was a small marsh to the right, which is very well visible. I think uh, he wanted to see that, and um, he was, of course, not overpacing. But why should he? I mean, he he wants to get the first control in a good way, and that's what he's doing here. So 11 minutes and 16 seconds of running. Let's have a look at the gap. It was 1.33 between Berman and Tonchon. I think it's a little bit less now. Still, let's see, 1.10, 1.15, something like that. See also that Lundanes and Daly are almost together. Here we have Frédéric Tonchon. Yep, Tranchon just coming up to the summit of this hill. Checking the direction. Made a good aggressive start to this. You will know what the gap was, of course, at the beginning of the race, and we'll have some sort of race plan to see whether he will be able to catch up Gustav Berman. Mm -hmm. And he is quite much faster here in this first part. 1.08 uh, behind. So caught up 25 seconds. No. Yes, 25 yeah, seconds. 25 seconds on that leg, and it's pretty similar, to be honest. See that? Berryman didn't get the best direction out from the control, I would guess. Following... Could have run a little bit more straight there, but of course we are talking about five seconds maybe. Uh, but we can look there, the gap between uh, Berman and Lundanes, which uh, has grown, and that's actually fairly surprising. He's been caught up by Daly and by Martin Regborn. Here we have the group with uh, Lundanes, Riekborn and Tally. Lundanes still at the in the third place, but what kind of feedback does that give to you if you if you feel like you've already caught Lundanes? It's a pretty good feeling so early on. Yeah, of course. Uh, Especially for Martin Rekborn, who started. I mean, it was Daly and the Lundanes, it was only like 20 seconds yeah. behind those, uh, between those two. So that uh, was quite expected. But uh, for Rekborn, of course, it's a good, very good group to be in. At the same time, I mean, they know that there's a forking system coming. So um, mm -hmm. he knows that he has to do the job on his own as well. Daniel Hubman there as well. 3.23. Also made a good start. 
yet to see, of course, any of those who've gone around. But here is a next chasing group. So this is control number one, six runners through so far. Top six still in the same order as before. In fact, top seven still in the same order before. With it Kral here in eighth. So we here we see it splitting up. Uh, Lundenes seems to have a uh, straight control there. Deli has to run to the left. Riekborn on the same loop as uh, Frédéric Tronchon. Coming up to five minutes now behind uh, Gustav Berman. Gauta, Halland Staver. Matthias Kibbutz, Johan Runeson, Joey Hadorn, Luca Basse. Luca Basse. So pr everyone's still in the same positions apart from Joey Hadorn and Luca Basse switching around. So this is where it, in the forking it starts to get complicated because some will have the, the south loop first, some have it will have it uh, part way through uh, the forking, the like the loop, and it's really only they get until they get to number ten that we'll be able to see the positions. Here properly. we have the two Swiss, the the only ones running around. What I've seen. Well, they've Jonas Ecker and Florian Hovald have both overtaken uh, Ruslan Glibov there uh, as a result of that loop. But everyone at the moment going pretty steadily. Mm, Hoopman is not uh, too far behind Riekborn. In a very open part, he might uh, see his back. He was 18 seconds uh, behind Regborn at control number one. Mm, might be a bit more though. Yeah, I think so. That's my guess. So top 16 all through and into the loops, the forkings. Definitely going to be split up at this point. Uh, Alden Heindahl is caught up a few places. Uh, so five runners there, Rudolf Zernis catching up a few places as well. Another group here into control number one. Lots of bodies in the forest. Torger Norbeck in the lead of the group. Yeah, that's quite a big group here coming. Ralph Street in there as well. And I remember when we saw them at the start, they were that whole group were starting within only a few seconds of each other. But this, <laughs> some of these runners in this group will have caught up uh, time, I think, on. Yeah, Those ahead of them. This let's is fantastic. call it a big group. That's fantastic. Let's say from places 22 to 43. So 20 runners there all together between... Um, in about less than 30 seconds, about 20 runners within uh, 30 seconds led by Torge Norbeck of uh, Norway. It looks like... Uh, uh, Seems that Magnitelli did a small mistake there, running all the way on the top of the hill. Uh, also, Elias Kuka 
seems to be to run in a strange direction there. Linden has the green glued to the line. Matthias, Kibbutz and Magni Deli, I think they could spot each other. Mm -hmm. uh, Deli on the way out from control number seven or ten. Seven it should be. Well, with that sharp points, the sharp change of direction, you're almost mm -hmm. going in and out of the control in the same direction. Yeah. Should Eker help and Kibbutz can inside. high five now. They're on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think this was a, we've seen a mistake there by Elias Kuka, now disappearing from the GPS. And also we see Luca Bassi disappearing from the picture. Whether he's got that control or not, I'm no, not sure. No, he didn't. I don't he think he the got it. Completely? Yeah, okay. I think so. Now he sees the back of Florian Howald. This was the control that uh, Two was missing, wasn't it? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, she was too far to the north. Uh, Martin Anovutic Kral going, I think, off the line. He'll be heading to what looks like control number eight on uh, on this particular picture. Yeah, now Basse has uh, got that, got his control, but lost that uh, placing, loss, losing yeah, the back of Let's say he lost between 25 and 30 seconds, maybe. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Now we see Hoopman coming to the control where we've seen uh, Bassi having problems. We have seen uh, Tove Alexanderson having problems in the women's race. No problems for Hoopman though. Seems that uh, Runeson is having a small He's going a little bit too far. He followed the track a bit too far. Having to run the uh, S curve. I mean, this is uh, both difficult for us and uh, <laughs> difficult for the runners to yeah. keep an overview here. You have no idea uh, which loop the others are on or uh, which position you're at. Um, you just have to uh, rely on your feeling and hope and then uh, like try to, to get an impression of uh, how good you have been running before and what your position could be, but you don't really know. You, you just hope that you more or less get together again with the runners you were running out. And I think now we see a mistake of Daniel Hoopman. It's kind of the same thing that we have seen Magnadelli doing before. Running all the way up to the hill there. If you think about our top three, we've got Berman in the blue. He's just got to go to one more control before the end of the loop. Lundinez at the very south part of our picture. He's got that little triangle to do, and then I think we'll head uh, to the end. And uh, Tranchon has also got um, only a few more controls. He's done that triangle in the south already. So Daniel Hubman has uh, corrected his mistake and found the control number seven. But also there, I think it was around, let's say, 20 seconds, maybe. Mistake by Hoopman, 20, 25. You can s we know that uh, Bergman and Glebov are on the same uh, go running to the same control, uh, looks like Berman has just uh, caught up and maybe now overtaken 
uh, the Ukrainian, so running that a bit faster. But we're going to have to wait and see what the difference is compared to those chasing as all the forking of the loops unravel and we get another look at who's in which position and whether there haven't been many changes in position so far, but I think this we should see some differences after the uh, end of this uh, loop by the time they get to control number 10. Tosho mm. choosing to run around this hill there. Actually, I don't know if that's necessary. He has to do the climbing anyway. But maybe he's choosing to stay more south of the line, getting the those hills Halan Staver is on and also Joey Hadon to get the direction to the control. Oh. I think he could have chosen to keep uh, straight on the line there, on the red line, to get to the point where he's heading to now. Um, there's no climbing to win by running around, he has to go up anyway. And uh, I mean, there's no big green area there. Now he's uh, choosing to stay south of the red line, so uh, that might have been the reason why he, he went down from the beginning. So Berman now punching control number 10. He's done the loop, will head out towards uh, control number uh, 11, and you can see the tail on the GPS is 30 seconds. Uh, and Berman's advantage over Tonchon was one minute and eight seconds at number one. I think both uh, Riekborn and also Lundenes, they are making a small, I mean, it's just a small uh, loop or whatever you would call it, uh, too much there. They could have had it up uh, a little bit earlier on a small track, but we have seen uh, Runeson doing the same thing before, so it might be tricky to see it. Now we are behind Gustav Berman. Yep, just passed by the refreshment point on his way to control number 11. He's got to run up uh, towards the top of the hill, and then it's uh, Noel in amongst this small slope. Mm -hmm. Now we are in an area where we didn't see the women running. So live behind the leader, maybe just checking out what's going on, what all the features are as he runs, looking maybe looking for the marsh on his way into control number uh, 11, but it's very, very close to the control now. It's very obvious when you see him running, how he's looking around, trying to get the features he spotted on the map, and he's turning the heads. So we have control number 11, a shorter one now to 12. And the men will essentially keep running at more towards the east and the, the south corner of the map. Uh, then they will have a map exchange and have a really, really long leg uh, back over to uh, towards the middle of the map. But they will be they will be doing a map exchange. They have no opportunity to plan that uh, in advance. Oh, although I'm sure they can, may, they maybe will have some spare energy to think about, um, uh, perhaps about what kind of uh, challenges the planner will have, and what kind of, um, you know, maybe they will expect a really long leg right after the exchange. Of course, they exchange. expect a long leg, but you don't know if there's one more control control coming mm -hmm. before, so mm -hmm. you can't really start planning it, and that's the whole idea of the course setter by having this map change. Um, let's see, my guess is that the gap is a... Uh, the gap looks a bit bigger now. Yeah. It was one minute and eight seconds uh, at control number one, but now behind Tranchant on his way to control number 11, we'll get the time check at number 12. 
But this is Tonchon as he makes his way towards the top of the hill. You can see the bare rock, the visibility, the runnability gets a little bit better. You just got to check all of the features there. Good direction though into the control. And then we'll get the time at... Um, control 12. And you see that uh, the time is running out now, so he starts to lose some time compared to Gustav Berryman. Started 1 and 33 behind. And that uh, TV control number one, it was 108. So we're waiting for the Frenchman, for Frédéric Tonchon at control number 12. There he is. As 1.38 behind. So he's lost 30 seconds in, uh, in the loop. And then next it was Lundinez, uh, but now Regborn has had a good yeah. race. Very good race. So to uh, Mika Kimler, who was in seventh place, he's in that orange dot alongside uh, Magna Daly and Olaf Lundinez vying for fourth place. As, uh, and Daniel Huben, who was in sixth, the pink dot has dropped behind. Yeah, it's uh, Riek Bonner who's doing a great uh, race so far. Running away from uh, Lundanes, Daly and Hoopman. Yeah, he's really used that loop well to get away from the rest of them. He, won't, he, he will know he's had a good race, but of course you have no idea what the others have been doing. And Martin Regborn will drop down the side of the hill in towards control number 11. There it is. Mm -hmm. It's very nice to see him back in uh, such a good shape. He was very strong uh, 2016 when he won a medal at the European Champs. He also won the Volca Praise in Finland and uh, struggled a little bit during the last years, but now he's back in great shape here. So Regborn was three minutes and five seconds behind uh, the lead at control number one. Now he's dropped a little bit more time compared to Gustav Berman, but more importantly, he's gained some places. There he is, this is control number 12. 5.6K around our 13.4 kilometer course and the gap three and a half minutes now. So he's lost 25 seconds on um, for, compared to control number one, but mm. still doing well. Now, now we see group. a big group there. Manedali, Mika Kirmula, Daniel Upman, Olaf Lundanes. See, it's not the Norwegians leading this group. I think it's uh, Kirmula. Well, let's see who will actually punch his control first. This is Norwegian shirt. Yeah, he is Daly, Kirmula, Lundanes, Hoopman, Wojte Kral. So 4.15 behind. Behind the group, we have Matthias Kibbutz a little bit in a vacuum there. No runners around. Uh, Daniel Hubman's managed to catch up to that group of um, now six runners, I think. Uh, no, five, five runners, runners um, uh, from his mistake uh, earlier on in the loop. So managed in controls 11 and 12 to catch up that time. And now the five of them running together. Now then, what do you make of the route choices to 13? Well, it seems that uh, the group is coming a little bit closer to Riechborn. So we had uh, Matthias Kibbutz here, 
Didn't see him in the picture, but five minutes and 12 seconds behind. Here we have a Gaute, Halan Staver, and also Joey Haddon. 5.46 and 5.49 behind. Yeah, and there we have Jonas Secker. They started together, so still together, even after the forking method. Mm -hmm. so here we see my impression. Let's see. The Ekbon was uh, 3.30 behind, so it was uh, 50 seconds approximately to the group. That's less now, it's around half a minute. Like, so the tail on the GPS is a 30 second tail. Mm -hmm. Keyboards was choosing to run around quite a lot there. So See, that's what that chasing group did, so they managed to catch up some time. Ruslan Glibov into 14th, now over seven minutes uh, behind Gustav Berman, and we should be looking out for that um, big group of runners that we saw all together at control number one. They should be coming through very fast. Rasm Huben there in 15th place by himself. So that big chasing group of uh, about 20 runners were about seven and a half minutes uh, behind Gustav Benjamin at control number one. So they ha that group together have, have lost some time, but this looks like part of them as well. Adam Niederfeld and Emil Svensk actually catching quite a few places there. And the four Swedes all together, you can tell comparison of the number they are, the number that they're running with uh, compared to their position, you can calculate how many places they've managed to catch up. That looks good. Aston Key there, catching up a lot of places. He started in number 100. So this big group uh, losing hmm, between maybe like 30 seconds on Gustav Berman to it's, a uh, more, they're a little bit more spread out now, of course, as well. We can point out that uh, Matthias Kibbert, he did just lose two seconds compared to Gustav Berman in this uh, between TV1 and TV2. So he's doing quite a good job. But uh, <laughs> at the same time, of course, we have to mention that uh, Gustav Berman is running really strong mm -hmm. in the front there the front runner mm, interesting with Aston Key position number 23 great job there so far now let's see Riek there there it seems that uh, uh, the gap is not too big anymore it's hard, really hard to tell. This is control 17. Yes. So at this point, the runners will discard their first map and pick up a new map. And um, they will see a really long leg towards back towards uh, the middle part of the map where they've been running already. And they'll have to make some quick decisions about where they're going to go. I think uh, we see the maps there. Uh, all at the same place, so uh, it's very easy for the runners to guess that there's no forking system coming <laughs> uh, after this control. So everyone has the same course from that point. And we are waiting for Gustav Perriman to come here to control number 17. So at this point, they are over halfway round the course. There he is. 
keeping his head up and looking there, looking for what he has to do. Just drops the map and picks up a new one. And now he will see that really long leg towards uh, the middle of the map, just being careful to make the right decision. And he heads off into the forest. We will, of course, be looking at the GPS tracking very closely to see what decision he's made. But let's uh, have a look at what uh, people behind him are doing. There's a good gap over ahead of Tonchon uh, and uh, Regborn being caught up by that uh, chasing group led by, looks like, Daniel Hoopman at the moment. Mm, and uh, already here we can see he is not going to run around. Uh, if he would run around, then he will hit. He would hit the track directly there. So straight on, not unexpected. And let's see. So the gap was uh, 138 between Berryman and uh, Tronchon. At the last TV control. There he is, to the right. I think we have seen him. So uh, it's maybe a little bit closer again. Yes, so just behind the tree. There he is. Ah, so it's going to be roughly the same time, caught up three seconds, but Tonchon running uh, same speed as Gustav Berman, just being careful, folding that map up, just checking the his route out there. Now, Tonchon may well take a risk, may well go round, but I think uh, I think it's a good uh, option to go straight. It, it looked time. as if it would go straight. I agree. The way he folded that map, uh, he folded it with the, the right-hand side kind of going underneath, and that means you just block out this uh, long track route that goes north of the path. I think he, we seem he's already made that decision to go straight, and it's, uh, I think, probably for most the best option uh, on this leg. See the gap between uh, Rick Bon and the group behind. It's getting less and less. I think they, they will be together here at that point later on when he picks up the map and uh, we'll have to read the map carefully. So Regbon was uh, 3 minutes 30 behind at control uh, number 12. I think it's going to be, he'll have dropped a little bit more time though by the time he gets to control 17. There's, I think I've uh, seen him there. Lost some time, but we know that the group uh, behind is very close and they for sure Manage to get a little bit closer if they will come soon. There we see them. So Riek Born punching there. Three minutes, 45 seconds behind. Lost 15 seconds from the last TV control. And here we have Daniel Hoopman. And uh, he is going strong now. 3.54 behind uh, Gustav Berryman. Now he's caught up a lot of places. That's... Uh who I'm looking at, who's, yeah, he's caught up a lot, especially after a like, small little wobble mistake in the loop and then managed to drop down to about seventh position, pulled back up to fourth now. Mm. That's very good. Let's see if uh, we have someone in the group there choosing to run around. We are waiting for Matthias Keyboards next to this uh, TV control.
still waiting for Matthias Kubert. Some movement, I think, in the forest in the far distance. There looks like some some red colours. He was five minutes and 12 seconds behind, so he lost uh, six seconds. Let's see, he's all alone and uh, he's a strong runner, so he might choose to go around, but he waited there, checking the situation. You see, actually, Joey Haddon, he used his map on this uh, first uh, <laughs> part of the course in a chasing start. What? What's happening there? Yeah, Joe Haddon, I think quite famously now, didn't open his map until halfway around the chasing start in Norway last year. Ah, look, Matthias Kiewert, yeah. the blue dot. Indeed. I think he is doing what we expected. I think he is going to go round. If we put money on anybody going round, <laughs> I think it would have been Matthias Kiewert. Yeah, and, and, and Joey Haddon, actually. <laughs> Okay. And I think that they will take. Uh, it, it's tough for a runner like Gaute, Hallen Staver to, to go in its own, then, when you have the two runners you're running with choosing to run around, then you. It's quite convenient to go around as well. <laughs> it's Florian Hovald, Jonas Ecker still together. Lost some time, 50 so they seconds. they went round to control number one. Will they go round to control to this on this long control from 17 to 18? I think, ooh, okay, maybe not. I was going to say, from the direction they left the control, uh, they were just kind of trying to get away from the control, I think. Mm, I mean, they didn't, when they picked up the map, they didn't know which direction no, they would they have. They were just kind of keeping going. Yeah, I, I, we, you got the feeling that you want to leave the control quickly because you have runners coming behind you and you don't want them to see you. I think this is Johan Runes... No, Emil Svensk, Ruslan Glibov. Yeah, this is the Ruslan Glibov, I think. He was running by himself, has been caught up by some of the leaders on that big pack who were mm -hmm. about seven, close to eight minutes behind. Riedefeld, Lissell, Novikov. So Emil Svensk has caught time on uh, overall on Gustav Bernman, was 7 minutes 37 behind at control number 12, and now is uh, uh, less than 7.5. Vettler ut braten. Odin Heimdahl, 7 minutes 56, and here we have uh, Martin Hopman. Well, this is uh, back at the lead, and uh, Gustav Berman on his way to control number 18. We have seen on the tracking that he's taken a very direct route, and then certainly uh, it's good running as you get up here onto the rocky ground on the top of the hills. So I think there's a little bit of a delay on our GPS tracking, so Berman a bit further on. Uh, compared to what we can see there. Tonchon also going pretty straight. Uh, okay, let's have a look. And at we the see that uh, Gaute Allen Staver is struggling to go along with the speed of uh, Matthias Kiburz and Joey Hadorn. Both of them very strong runners. You can also see in the chasing group we've got uh, Lundeners and Kral who've and split up from Daniel Hubman, Martin Legon and um, Mika Kimmela, who's the orange dot. We can also see that uh, Ecker and Homal didn't choose to go around again. They're going straight. As the others, Tranchot going quite much to the north there. At this leg. Trying to avoid the marsh there. 
I have it's kind of slowed down his tranche on there at that point, whether that's just crossing the marsh or has he not been able to execute the plan as well as he would have liked? Um, I think that he has control over the situation, uh, but it would have been interesting to see the next <laughs> five seconds because <laughs> he has to turn now direction, otherwise uh, down to the lake, otherwise uh, he will go too much to the north. Yeah, I mean, my he's going too much to the north, uh, in my opinion. He should not round the lake there to the north when he's... He wasn't doing it from the wasn't doing it from the beginning and uh, now it's just going away from the line too and it's it's quite unnecessary to do that um, I don't know if it's planned or if he's a little bit I mean as I said before his his uh, tail is not very very long at the moment so if he's hesitating now is turning down to the lake anyway. So I think that he just lost contact to the map a little bit. And I mean, that's the risk when you go straight. Um, that won't happen <laughs> to uh, Hadon and Kibbutz, I hope so at least. Um, but if he execute it well to go straight, I think it's, it's faster for sure. Or it should be, in my opinion, and also the core setter's opinion. Mm -hmm. But let's see, never underestimate the strength of the fast runner there. <laughs> uh, I like it more how uh, the group with uh, Hopman and Lundanes Riekborna is executing this long leg. They are on the top of the hills there, the runnability is very good in this place, um, avoiding extra meters. Yes, Gustav Berman was definitely closer to the stream. Uh, stayed low, where the runnability is not quite as good. Mm, now we are behind the two Swiss, Hovald and Ecker. They are now, I guess, down in this small valley with the track and the stream. And this is control number 18, and we are waiting for Gustav Berryman. I think we've had Luca Basse and mm -hmm. Johan Runeson retiring. Saw so them coming to the finish here. Yeah. They should not be here yet. No, no. So it looks like they, both of them have retired from the race. Gustav Berman now following him towards the 18th control. Oh, oh he's punched the 18th control. He's very obvious about where he's looking and looking with purpose, I think, when he, he's running. Uh, you can see his head turning in uh, <laughs> to the left and to the right, checking the features he wants to see. He's very proactive in his running. So far, we haven't seen any problems at all for Benjamin. There was the control. Didn't expect it to come. He didn't even slow down before the control. So that's a very good sign. Yeah, very smooth. That's the control. 
It will be interesting now to see uh, the gap between uh, the group with Kibbutz and Hadorn and uh, the other gap with Hopman and Lundanes, Stelly, Kirmula and Vojta Kral. So Tronchon was uh, 35 seconds behind at control number 17. One minute, sorry, 135 seconds behind. So the gap is now grown. We're waiting for Tronchon who... It's, it's uncertain whether he... Here he comes. Uh, lost contact with the map or whether that was a, a plan there anyway he's now he has lost well uh, actually 23 seconds i i'm surprised that he didn't lose more on this um it, it didn't seem to be very distinct uh, i'm sure that wasn't planned uh but he only lost uh, 23 seconds now what do you make of uh, looking at hadorn and kibbutz there well it looks good i mean they were 518 behind, Hoopman was 354 behind. Um, I think they will catch some time doing running around there. Yeah, I think they But we have to point out, I mean they are extremely strong runners. If you compare to Gaute Halland Staver, he lost uh, more than 30 seconds on this uh, route around. So I would guess that it would have been better for Gaute to run straight. He's uh, He's kind of orienteer who can uh, execute uh, a leg very well. Uh, com yeah, you can compare it to Gustav. I don't think that uh, Berryman would have been faster running around as uh, Kibbutz and Hadon were doing. But uh, those, yeah, both Hadon and uh, Kibbutz and also Tronchon, they uh, can do very well on a, on a leg like that. Okay, here's the next uh, group coming in now, and I think they've caught up at some time actually on Gustav Bellman. Uh, in third place at Control 17, we had Martin Megbot, who was uh, 3.45 behind. And now it looks like uh, Kral has taken the initiative on that control. Mm, they uh, were approximately 20 seconds faster than uh, Gustav Bellman. And very soon we will also have Kibbutz and Hadorn. And don't have uh, the group before in this graphic here. We are waiting for Kibbutz and Hadorn. They were five minutes and 18 seconds behind. Kibbutz at least. I think we'll see them really shortly. And uh, here they come, and they uh, were much faster. So Let's say for 28, it's 50 seconds yeah. faster. For 25, he is now behind, and uh, that's impressive. Almost a whole minute faster. We also see that Gaut Alan Staver is doing a small mistake there, leaving the track too early. So now uh, Kibbutz and Hadon, they are only um, yeah, 50 seconds behind the group with Hoopman. So if, then, if they caught up that group, that's a group of seven on uh, running together, all they're all in competition for third place. Exciting. That's a risk that's paid off. And Definitely. it's good that there's that opportunity to take that risk and play to your strengths in this course, I think. Uh, and the course that I was very convinced that uh, you would lose time running around. Well, not if you're Matthias Kubert and Joey Hadorn. Yeah, he said that they tested the course and that it was faster. And uh, But it's, of course, it's, <laughs> it's, it's very tough to, to test it because usually you don't have uh, as fast runners as the... Uh, as, uh, yeah, as Kibbutz and Hadorn on, on when you're testing a track like that. So another pretty long leg on the way to control number 20. And I think I, I don't rate Tronchon's uh, view of going a bit further away from the line, getting a bit more stuck and not picking up those paths that we saw Berman take. Um, we see also that the uh, Gaute Alan Steve lost uh, 30 more seconds doing a mistake to uh, this control number 18. So he no now is more than one minute behind the group uh, he left the control control number 17 with. Mm. 
Hovald and Ecker. They were some seconds faster than Berryman on this long leg. Four seconds. Emil Svensk, Ruslan Glibov, very close to this group now. So Jerkel Isel. You know what, this group uh, of Emil Svensk actually running faster than Gustav Berman. They've mm -hmm. caught up about a minute uh, in, from control number 12, I think. Alexi Niemi to 17th position of in Riedefeld on the way into the control. And we see that uh, Gustav Berman is very close to the control now. Here we are behind Lundanes, I think. Mm -hmm. Lundes on his own at the moment, but you know there are four others in the forest very, very close by. There we go, we can see Lundanez just going a little bit more to the left compared to the others. Uh, yeah. Berman at control 20 already. And I think Tranchon is losing more time. He was 158 behind at control number 18. Yeah, it was a bit unnecessary to go uh, that far away from the red line. So Gustav Berman staying very close to the red line, now uh, on the path, on the way into the slope. Now I'm not sure whether Haddon and Kibbutz are catching any time on the, the, the group of five. They were 45 seconds behind at control 18, and I think they're not making uh, progress at the moment. Well, especially because the, the end of the tail there, this is uh, Lundanes tail, mm -hmm. and he's some seconds behind the group. Uh, choosing uh, once more. Another route now, more direct than the others. And we also see that Beriman is now heading into the slope. Yeah, this is the control at the bottom of the slope, control number 21 for the men. We will get the time at control 22, which is uh, in the arena just before they uh, do the map exchange for the second time. We'll go on to their third map of the day. But Gustav Benjamin flying down this slope, keeping it all under control, and he's still got a good gap on the rest of the field. And I think the gap on Tonchon is... Uh, growing even more. So we look towards the bridge, towards towards the uh, edge of the forest for Berman to come and run through the arena, get the last map and do the last final loop of the course. Uh, we're looking for the blue and yellow colours of Sweden. There he is. Keeping his head down and you all know that he's, he's had a good run out there in the forest. He won't know what anybody else has been doing, but now, as we've said before, he will uh, pass through the arena. We'll get some feedback from the coaching zone. He, well, fails to deposit the map in the box, but picks up a new one and uh, some refreshments. And we'll get some feedback. Yeah, it's quite windy. It's not too easy to hit the box with a <laughs> piece of paper. But I mean, it's, he's done a very good race so far. We haven't seen any problems. Uh, he's quite, <laughs> quite sure that 
<laughs> I mean, you said he's not sure about his uh, course so far. It seemed that he was quite well, sure about. Well, no, he is. He is now. He's run through there and just heard the <laughs> arena speaker saying he's got still got two minutes. <laughs> so maybe not until then. But now he can. He's just had the two coaches run alongside him, cool him down with some water, and I will get some feedback. I think from that um, to see what's yeah what really has been happening. Can I also point out that London mm -hmm. has lost their around half a minute uh, from the last control to uh, between control number 19 and 20. Uh, we have there Magne Daly in the lead of the group. Ekborn, Daniel Upman and Wojtek Kral so are the other members of this yeah. group. We're looking for Tranchant, who I think is stuck on the track above the control for a bit, a little bit longer, he's but here he is, to the right in the there. left of the picture. Mm. You can he, just see him coming down to He's the one of the guys, uh, I think he's quite aware of that he's behind Gustav Berryman, and, uh, but in front of the others, so he... And also that it, many runners had problems yesterday, so mm -hmm. you try to mm -hmm. stay on the path a little bit longer, leave it, get the stone at the top of the hill, and then it's yeah, quite yeah. easy entrance to the control. Yeah. And he too will get some feedback on how well he is doing. The gap was 1.58. It's going to be a little bit longer now. We're looking for the French kit uh, emerging from the forest. So it's going to be over two minutes with Tonchon losing uh, some more time, I think, on these last two longer legs. But it's not been too much damage and he's still in a solid second place. Let's have a look at the time. So it will be two minutes and 18 seconds. He's lost 20 seconds from control 18. And this, uh, we're looking now, these are some of the spectators doing the spectator races. But now we're looking for this chase group. Yeah, that's definitely not the <laughs> daily group there. Here we there go, there's there. daily. <laughs> Approaching the control quite a lot from the right. Uh, Martin Leiborn there as well. Uh, Mika Kiermela, Daniel Hubman, Wojtek Kral. Still those five runners together. Nobody's uh, managed to break away from them at the moment, but being led out by Magna Daly. So the gap was 3.29 at Control 18. That's the gap between uh, Gustav Berman and Magna Daly. It will be about the same, I think. By the time they make it to uh, the spectator control, we will watch them coming uh, out of top of the forest there. Here's Magna Daly leading that group. Martin Legborn is next. Mika Kimmela, who's had some sort of accident, I think, or maybe in a marsh um, on the course. Yeah, it looks very tough. <laughs> So the gap 3.29, exactly the same gap for Magna Daly. See now, some meters between the first runners, especially between Kirmula and Hoopman. So Tronchon heading up. Um, here's Lindenez. Now he's lost. Let's see how much time he's lost. He was pretty much with that group of uh, four. Forty-six seconds behind the group now. This uh, stone, control number 24. We are waiting for Gustav Perriman coming here. Still no problems at all. Now he's got two more controls to find before the finish. After 12.7 kilometers of running, that's the gap back to Lindenaires and Haddon and Kibert. Now they're going to struggle to catch up any more time on that group. At one point, I thought they may have been able to do it. But maybe that uh, the effort required in running around that long leg has uh, uh, cost them a little bit more now. Matthias Kubert's there leading out Jerry Haddon, ninth and tenth spots. But they are 50 seconds behind Olaf Lindenez. 
So maybe running around didn't pay off in the long term. I, it's hard to tell. Oh, Tranchant did a small mistake there to control number 23, but still the gap is quite big. But uh, he has to get the control, control number 24 now without any problems. Otherwise, the group will get very close. Uh, no problems at all for Gustav Berryman at control number 25. Control number 26 uh, shouldn't be a problem either. It's uh, located on the spur uh, on the top of a hill there. For sure, it's quite obvious here on this last loop. He's always trying to get up on the hill to get the controls from above. Um, to not risk uh, to get lost in the slope. So we're looking up the hill. Yeah, we should see Tranchant approaching this control. Looking out for any movement in the forest. Now Tranchant just has to hang on, keep control of his orienteering. In fact, I think if we can See, so he's going to be a bit to the right of picture. Maybe again. a small mistake again. Seems to be a bit nervous here yeah. in the end. <laughs> Looking around as well. Let's see how big the gap is. But he's not lost. He's only lost one second compared to Gustav Berman, actually. So, but that's. I think more importantly is the gap down to that chasing group. We're looking for the leader now. This is the route out from the last control towards the finish. We are looking for the leader and we're looking for the winner. Mm -hmm. Here he is. Here he is, Gustav Benman, who started with one minute and 38 I think, seconds uh, advantage uh, at the start, having won the middle distance race. Uh, he's had a very, very solid run all the way around today's course, cooking it uh, very straight I would, and done enough. I would not only call it solid, I would call <laughs> it really, really good. I mean, he didn't, we didn't see any struggles and uh, he was all alone. It's always a special situation when you have uh, this lead you have to work with or you can work with and that was very impressive. And a massive grin on his face to take the victory here today in this chasing start. Really, I'm sure gives him so much confidence and he can celebrate the two victories there. But now let's have a look. This is, these are the routes into controls out of control 25. And the gap, ah, it's going to be interesting to see if Tonchon, I mean, the, this next control is quite, quite easy, but uh, anything really could happen. Mm, yeah. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be a big surprise. It if would, would be a big surprise. If he would miss that control. But let's have a little look at the chasing uh, group who are battling for third spot. Daly's looking good in the, ahead of that uh, group. Kiemela, who we saw had injury on his face, also um, in the lead of that group too. So the gap is growing back to second place and we're looking for Frédéric Tranchant. I think there he is. You can see the foliage yeah. moving out of the way there. Oh, oh. but oh, you can see some oh, chasers. Oh. I think. Yeah, but Somebody. still that's enough. Here, we, here is the chasing group. And in fact, they've gone a little bit too far around. Magna Daly there leading and, that group. Uh, Mika Kirmula, Mika they're Kirmula. fighting for the third position. And, uh, and Martin Egborn as well. And we've got all the Finnish commentators yeah. to, our, uh, to our right. They know that their man has a chance uh, for a bronze medal there. Frédéric Tonchon powering down that run. And he knows there are people chasing. And Mika Kirmula and uh, Magna Daly are on the race for the third place. And the bronze medal looks like Frédéric Tonchon has got it in the bag after a bit of a nervy ending. But it's going to be Magna Daly and Mika Kirmula all the way up the line. Magna Daly keeps on looking behind him. Torsha is safe in second, but let's have a look all the way up the line. It's going to be very, very close. I think the Norwegian has it. The Norwegian will take it. And very, very close. Mika
Rebecca Kimmler there just getting into the fourth spot. So Magna Daly edging out the fin on the line there. Martin Legborn wasn't in that sprint finish at the end and we will have a few others about to cross the line very, very soon to take uh, the rest of the podium places. So Tonchon there in second, he was clear. Magda Daly, Mika Kimmler, that's a uh, that sprint finish and the damage is done to the fin. Uh, the what course. a fight by Mika Kirmala <laughs> all the way. I mean, a very impressive race, uh, not only today, but also yesterday. I mean, <laughs> half of the race was yesterday and uh, he did a great job. It was a long time ago. We had a uh, Finnish runner in the, in the men's class up uh, that high yeah. in the result list. And it's very nice to have them back here. And a great job by Mika Kirman, also a great job, I have to say, by Frédéric Tronchon. It's mm -hmm. not that easy to, to work with this when you're in between two groups. Um, well, yeah, you're saying great race for Mika Kimmler. Of the seven finishers so far, he's got the fastest time, uh, 70 minutes and 21 seconds. Uh, so, yeah, he's really worked his way up the field from seventh place um, after the middle distance yesterday. Yeah, and for him, the race should have been, uh, let's say, 20 meters longer, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was very close on that, uh, actually, towards the line and catching up a little bit. He definitely... Um, stuck his uh, hands out to try and cross the line uh, close now. Have you had the Londoners to the finish? No. No, we haven't Very had Londoners. Not Londoners. that I've seen. We have to the finish. Hadon here coming. Next one to come is Londoners there. See him. And Matthias Kibbertz was running with Joe Haddon, so he punches there the air. He's well. very happy with that run and it evidently got away from both Londoners and Kibbertz on that final stretch. Yeah. Both of them choosing to run around on the long leg. This is uh, Lundanez, who I'm not, I had a pretty, I think, a subpar performance. I think he'll be pretty disappointed with his performance today. Well, let's say, I mean, he. I got the feeling that he didn't want to stay in the group, that he wanted to do try mm -hmm. stuff on his own. Mm -hmm. It didn't pay off. Um, it was a, the race for sure was okay in the beginning for Lundanez. Uh, some smaller mistakes, but. I think he tried something in the end, it didn't pay off. Yeah, that can happen. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. very good race by uh, Joey Haddon as well. Yeah. Um, third fastest time today so far. Um, well, much more active race in this chasing start than the one in Norway at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love uh 74 minutes, so four minutes um, slower than the, the fastest runner on the course so far. But I, I kind of got the impression that his he wasn't running as as fast as some of the others as well, even though he was taking some of the different routes and like dropped uh, quite a lot behind the pack that he was yeah. running with. You, you didn't get the feeling that he is dominating mm. both uh, physically and technically as you as we had in other years uh, in long distances. Um, but there's still some uh, months to go to the World Championships and I'm, sh I'm very sure that he will be ready then. Yes. Especially is, uh, on Jonas so. Ecker. I think he has done quite a good race as well. Behind him we have Emil Svensk, another guy with a great race. Mm. Yeah, Emil Svensk was uh, 43rd yesterday, so it's caught up a lot of time alongside uh, Usain Glebov. Uh, let's see. Gata Helen Steva, who we saw run the long way around on the, the long leg, 17 to 18, um, possibly losing out because of it. Jarko Lucel now coming up towards the finish line as well. And also in uh, the back of the arena, another big group all going through uh, together um, through the arena passage. Yeah, we can see them there. Big, big group of men all now uh, onto this final section of the course getting some assistance from the coaches as well, as they all now together 
will head up into the tree line. You can see them heading into the forest for the last small loop there. So yeah, very um, another impressive performance from Gustav Benjamin today. Yeah, um, the race was more or less as we expected it. I mean, uh, the the gap was big. Uh, the route choices straight was always okay. We saw that uh, second time on the way back. It was uh, and it was actually an option to run around mm -hmm. if you have uh, the physical strength. Um, but for a runner like uh, Gustav Bergman, uh, I mean, he, he if if straight is a good option, then he will pick it and he will execute it well, and that was what he was doing today, and uh, he did it great. Uh, I mean, no no mistakes, close to the controls uh, at all. Uh, I mean, I don't know what to say. He is uh, <laughs> yesterday. He was. I was more impressed yesterday. It was more impressive, I think, because it's shorter and the gap uh, one and a half minute or one minute is, mm -hmm. is a really big gap yeah, and yeah. today uh, the situation was different uh, he didn't have to risk everything um, it's harder to get uh, a feeling out of this race today but overall the, the whole weekend was very good yeah i have a feeling that kind of alexanderson and uh Berman kind of ran uh, you, similar races and that you go out with a lead and you've got to know that you need to keep keep your orienteering under control um, don't take too many big risks just making sure you've paced yourself okay around the whole thing and um, yeah you know keep that consistency working hard throughout the whole course yeah it's more this uh, relay running kind of style you have it's you put in some more safety in your orienteering, some more margins when you attack the control, maybe, at least if you have a, a gap that big. Um, and the, it was a very good spring all the way from Berryman. I'm, I really hope he will get it together this year to get the shape at the right time mm -hmm. for the World Championships. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have seen many years and he was dominating in Sweden uh, during spring and then uh, he couldn't really show all his potential uh, at the World Championships and I really hope he can uh, get that this year. Yeah, of course, these are first World Cup rounds and it's really the first indication of how well, the athletes have started preparing of the winter and the spring for the World Championships in Norway. Of course, it's the first time we've got a split World Championships. There are only going to be forest races uh, this summer in Usfjord, the middle distance, a long distance and a relay. Who's impressed and who needs to maybe go back to the drawing board, put a little bit more work in before uh, the World Championships? Well, um, I mean, uh, the runner's impressed uh, for sure, as you said. Uh, Gustav Berman, I think he shocked uh, the other runners a little bit, especially yesterday. Uh, same for Tuve, Alexanderson. Um, I mean, if I look at the result, the uh, best runner from Switzerland uh, is uh, Joey Hadorn. Um, yeah, in the top 10, but still, uh, usually we, we used to see them uh, in the fight for the top three. They have to do some more work. For sure, I'm, it was very impressive what uh, Mika Kirmula was showing this weekend. Nice to see that, uh, as I said before, the men's team from Finland had have some runners back up there. Um, yeah. Let's uh, quickly have a look at uh, this replay of the teams here. Most people going uh, straight to control number one, of course, picking out some of the micro route choices here. They were very much split up. A little bit of a hesitation by Gustav Berman actually into uh, that control marked number seven uh, on the map that we have on the screen. Uh, Daniel Hoodman's going to make a mistake here, going a little bit too far north, relocates off that top of the hill and uh, can keep going from there. Tongshan is a bit uh, not, not the most direct into that control. Mm, actually, I forgot before we have uh, Daniel Hopman with a quite a good result for the Swiss team. Yeah. Um, yeah. But even there, I'm sure he would like to fight for the top three. He's a runner who's uh, 
I'm not really afraid about his shape. He's always there <laughs> when there is medals to win yeah. at the World Championship. So uh, he knows his experience. He knows what, what to do, how to plan the season to be in shape at the, at the championships later on. But still, um, it's more the gap between Gustav Berman and everyone else, the else that uh, I'm sure many of the runners will be, will be a bit shocked mm -hmm. about. So Hadorn will catch up some time by going round on this long leg. Most of them staying at south of the line. Uh, Tonchon goes a bit further north and I think loses some time there as well. And then on still quite similar, that chasing group. From here, I think Lindenez will start to drop back from the pack. He, you've seen that he was trying to make his own routes yeah, here. Yeah, it was still quite good until here, mm -hmm. and, but it seemed a, almost a bit desperate that he really, that he's almost tired of running in the group and mm -hmm. wants to do orienteering on, mm -hmm. his, on his own, and uh, it didn't pay off. But it, I'm... It will be interesting to see what happened here on the last loop because the area is about a minute in front of Hadorn. And it's going too much down here a little bit. So now it's half a minute. See, still some seconds. Oh, okay. Mm, <laughs> there, someone had some power left in the end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think a bit of a nervy uh, last few controls for Frederick Tonchon as well. Like, uh, I think you could see he wasn't not as always as direct on... Um, yeah, and uh, you got the feeling that Lunas was not really eager to fight for this eighth place position. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah, into the night. So those are the top ten. Gustav Berman, that win. Great. Uh, another second place there for Frederick Tronchon hanging on to that time. And uh, so we can complete those top 10. So those are the two forest races uh, for this wor first World Cup round. We will have a real rest day tomorrow. And then on Tuesday evening, we will be having the sprint relay in the middle of Helsinki. So time for the, the teams to regroup, uh, get the relay teams in order, take uh, switch the forest heads for some sprint heads and hopefully some uh, fast uh, and fantastic action from the sprint relay team where we will see multiple teams per nation nations can enter up to um, four teams in this sprint relay so uh, we may well uh, see a lot of good competition between uh, teams from the same nation should be a very exciting one to see and so we will move from the forest here into the city of Helsinki and um, well two more Swedish victories uh, here today will the Swedes take another win uh, in the sprint relay we will just wait and see and we will see you on Tuesday evening goodbye in the final set and today very strong finish uh, and we have also uh, Robert Ternis finishing his race to death Aston Key from Australia today 1-11-27 today's competition and 37th place